Hi guys, this is Richard and Sophie. We're back to show you our new camper today. It's a micro camper, as they call them in Europe. It's a Kangoo Maxi, and the volume inside is about 2.1 meter long by 1.3 meter wide. Uh, we've had that camper for nearly six months now. We've been exploring uh, a lot of fronts during the COVID, and uh, it's been great. So we wanted to show you all about it. And uh, let's start with the kitchen. So, with uh, such a small van, we were really keen on having the option to cook both inside and outside. Uh, obviously, anytime the weather's nice, it's great to be cooking outside, but we also wanted the option to be able to uh, cook a meal and stay inside if the weather's bad or we wanted to be a bit more discreet. So. We came up with this option to have a, a pull-out drawer that's got uh, everything contained in it. Um, we've got our propane burner, two burners uh, running off propane which is stored underneath the van. Um, we've got our running water. Um, we've got about 35 litres of fresh water, that would be roughly 10 gallons I think, um, and about 30 litres of grey water. Fresh water is stored back here, grey water is underneath. Um, if we want to empty the grey water, all we have to do is back up to any dump station and we can open a little, uh, a little release at the bottom. Uh, and likewise to, to fill the fresh water, uh, we've got a fill point under here. Um, we've also got some lighting outside, uh, up here, if it's dark. Um, a bit of storage in the, in the door as well as under here um, and if it's uh, really buggy outside but we still want to cook we can put a mosquito net up that comes around the kitchen and keeps inside uh, bug free. Uh, to cook inside we just have to remove that cushion and then lift the lid and uh, here is the kitchen. So um, the same lights, there's still the same butane and the same water, it's electrical uh, it's actually butane, not propane, because it's more common in Europe. And um, the butane isn't really under the van, it's inside the car, but it's vented to under uh, the, the car, so that if it leaks, it's not leaking inside the van. So the water is stored in the drawer, but the butane itself is stored in the van, so that um, it can be vented properly outside. Um, the drawer is fully removable, but we can disconnect the electricity for the tap for the water and the butane boys and then take everything out if we need to. Um, it's worth mentioning for those of you that are watching from the US or Canada that in Europe it's not so uh, easy to get a van uh, converted and approved. It needs to get checked again. Uh, a van without a kitchen is not considered a van, so if you can remove the kitchen it makes your life a lot easier. So that was one of the incentives as well. Um, so it's quite handy to cook like that. We've done it a lot when it was uh, bad weather and uh, it's not actually too bad with moisture because we have quite a big skylight which we've installed ourselves. It's uh, again the choice is restricted so you're not gonna see our usual Bomar hatch or Lumar hatch that we like so much. It's flush with the top so it doesn't cut down on your aerodynamics or stick up so nobody can see it from standing around the van and uh, it can be fully removed as it is currently so you get uh, to really enjoy the view and have lots of space um, so it's quite a nice product actually we're quite happy with it and we've been through a winter and it's fine with snow, ice or any of that so no problem there uh, since we're on the roof section we also have a solar panel on the roof which is uh, 110 watts and um, again it's super slim so you can't sit and the whole goal with this minivan or micro van was to be able to travel again stealthy um, for camping reasons but also for safety reasons when it's packed during the day and it's full with our gear we don't want people to know it's a camper so from the outside again you can't tell at all it's a, it's a camper it's just uh, a normal van like any plumber or electrician or what not so it's um, it's quite handy. Let's talk now about the table. We've used the lagoon mount 
for our table. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to circulate and move about in such a small space. Uh, we can move backwards and forwards, spin it in all directions, move it this way and up and down. Uh, and the table itself, when it's not in use, it's, uh, it makes up part of the bed at night. Uh, so it's multi-purpose in that way. Um, over on this side, we've made a storage unit. We worked really hard to try and not make it uh, too overbearing, uh, given it's such a small space. And here you can see we've got storage for books. Uh, we've got a few open shelves. Um, some of them are hinged, so we can use these as additional surfaces if we've got, for example, a bed made up and we want to put a laptop to watch a movie, uh, we can do that. Likewise, when we're cooking, uh, if we've got this open, we can still uh, have another surface up here where we can put a few things. Um, we've got clothes stored in a couple of cubbies here, um, and we've got additional storage down behind. Uh, and that's really good as well because it's hidden. In the front corner here, we've got quite a big volume of storage. Um, we can fit sleeping bags, tents, climbing gear, whatever we want in there. Underneath that space, below what you see is the floor level, is actually where in a original Kangoo you would have the, the footwell for the rear seat passengers. So we've used that space to store a lot of our services, so batteries, propane, uh, fuses and electrical, um, we've got our compressor for our fridge in that space and we've also got a safe under there as well so we can have uh, some s secure storage that's hidden underneath floor level. Over on this side uh, we've got um, some I guess more visible easily accessible storage. Um, there's a, a few cubbies, we store uh, climbing gear, uh, we've got some uh, outdoors, outdoor camping chairs and things, ropes, helmets, harnesses, that sort of stuff. Uh, we also made this space uh, a full length, so it's open at the front and open behind where Sophie's sitting. And that way in the winter, uh, when we want to go skiing, we can put a full length of skis through here um, and not have them in the way too much. We also have storage uh, here above the cab, did it ourselves, the sewing. That's where we store all our blankets and sheets and pillows um, and even a couple of other things when we don't have the bed. It's just a velcro and to make sure more heavy things can stay we also have uh, those, I guess, slings that maintain things in place. Uh, it's quite easy to access, but it's quite nice to have all these bulky things out of the way. Um, also here, those domes are used for a curtain, which is completely blackout, that goes all the way to the ground. And um, the curtains are also insulated. We have put insulation in between the, the two layers of fabric. So from the outside, again, it looks quite stealthy. It's, it's dark um, color, and it feels like a partition wall. Um, it's really nice to block the light and uh, here this is where we store the two additional pieces that one goes here and we have the bigger one for the piece that's missing for the bed also um, stored and accessible quite easily here so uh, that's out of the way during the day but easy to get to those pieces actually uh, clip in place with a couple of magnets so they store really quickly but uh, they don't slide around or move when we're driving. And um, for those worried about our security, we also have a fire extinguisher here down uh, the driver's seat. Uh, for storage, we also have storage in the doors at the rear. So we have storage for spices and tea and oil in the door. It's quite deep. It goes all the way to the handle pretty much. Um, so quite convenient also for bulk food that we put in soft bags in there and we have also storage here in the in the wall um, which is good for bottles and also laptop and books and things like that and we have storage in the sliding door where we put some further books we have also a 
cover, reflecting cover that we can put in the skylight, which is quite uh, insulated and again provides a good blackout. So this is the one for our uh, skylight up the top. Um, the curtain at the front has got this stuff inside it, so uh, that makes it a lot warmer um, on cold nights and it does make a big difference. We've also got these for the, the front windows uh, on the hot days to keep the sun out. And uh, talking about staying warm, the entire van is insulated of course. Um, we tried a new technique we had not tried before and we're very happy with the result. It's cork. So uh, the van is full of cork. Um, we have different kind of cork. We have little bits of cork, uh, very small. It's granules of cork, so they're, they're between 3 and 10 millimeters in size. Um, it's chipped cork, leftovers from producing other products, uh, and it's then heated um, really hot, and it, it actually expands uh, kind of like, I guess, popcorn wood or something else, so it becomes even lighter than uh, normal cork, and it becomes resistant to moisture and um, molds and fungis and, and all of that sort of stuff. Moving on to electrical, we have an inverter which is 300 watts pure uh, sinusoid. We have several USB plugs. We have a fridge which is a 12 volt um, power fridge which is a drawer. Um, it's here, it's a dometic fridge. Um, it's 25 liters and it's, it's the CD25 model. Yeah, it works really well, it fits all we need for a week basically, um, so it's been working fantastic for us and the, the great pro of this fridge is that the, the um, compressor can be relocated sideways, so in our case the compressor is actually here behind the driver seat. Um, which enables us to have a unit that is not too deep and bulky to fit in this uh, relatively small space and it works really well. Uh, we have one battery which is roughly 100 amp hours. We have also the possibility to charge while we drive using the um, normal alternator of the car um, and uh, as Richard mentioned all of that is out of our way. Um, to find out what happens with the solar panel we have the Victron uh, app which tells us um, how much it's charged during the day and also the history of the charge so we don't need to physically see the device which means it can be quite hidden and uh, we left with a clean space for our own storage. Of course this changes into a bed and it takes the full width and uh, the full length so it is actually longer than any standard European bed which is normally two meter long and it is roughly the same width as a normal double bed um, which is normally 1.4 meter wide and here we have 1.35 meter wide so it is really comfortable. Um, the cushions we again have done ourselves. Um, we got two types of foam because we didn't want to use too much thickness uh, otherwise we don't have any space above our heads. So there is a first foam, which is a good quality foam, and it's topped up with a 2 cm um, memory foam, which works great. Uh, we've also done all the cushions ourselves um, and the, the upholstery, and it's quite nice. Uh, we're quite happy with the result again. Uh, the cushions that go in the middle can also use, be used as a backrest. Um, they're not currently in the van. Thank you for watching! Thanks for watching us. If you want to see some more uh, videos, uh, and you can visit our website, which is uh, www.bespoke-creations. Uh, you can see there all the photos and videos of our other vans. And if you want a van for yourself, then get in touch. Thanks for watching.